metabolic body typing. He looks at blood types, metabolic rate, body shape, and many other factors to create a personal eating plan for his patients. I met Dr. B in 1998 and he changed my life. He showed me the impact of food on my body and inspired me to look deeper at food types and combinations and their effect on my health. By following his guidance, well, most of the time, I've never felt better. So Luke is sympathetic dominant, which means that he runs on adrenaline all his life. And uh, that means that the best foods for him are fruits, vegetables, salads, rice, potatoes, fish, chicken, eggs, no red meat, no dairy at all, and no wheat. Especially dangerous for him are coffee and every caffeinated product and anything containing sugar because these refined carbohydrates will actually speed him up unnecessarily and would not have balancing effect on his metabolic type. So that's where I fit in. But what about everybody else? This is how metabolic body typing breaks down. Essentially, we're all divided into one of three metabolic body types, protein types, carbo types, and mixed. These three basic body types are all related to our body's autonomic nervous system. Huh? Okay, basically it's the thing that controls our metabolism. The autonomic nervous system is split into the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. These are two systems that balance each other to maintain control. Each one of us has a built-in dominance that predisposes us to certain lifestyle preferences and dietary requirements. Now this dominance has an effect on our physiology, physical and mental characteristics, and food likes and dislikes. So how does Dr. B go about finding out someone's metabolic body type? We ascertain the body type through observation and questions. So when you observe the iris of the person, the facial signs, the body shape, and various other signs, and ask many questions about likes, dislikes, about foods, drinks, warm or cold, we ask about the blood group, we ask about sports preferences, we ask about uh, many, many little details that give us the picture. Once metabolic body type has been established, we get an idea of what foods will work for you and what foods won't. Now, the thing to remember here is the way we feel on a day-to-day -day basis is very much dependent upon what we put into our bodies, our energy levels, our concentration, the way we feel about ourselves. This eating plan shouldn't be considered a short-term thing, but rather a paradigm shift in the way you think about food. Let me give you an example. I used to be the poster child for caffeine. I lived, breathed, and drank lots of caffeine. And much as I hate to admit it, it just does not work for me at all anymore. I have so much more energy, so much better concentration, and a better life without coffee. With this knowledge, we're able to make fundamental changes to the way we look at our food. And for me, the proof is in the way I feel. So to create goodfood.com, I'm gonna have to look at all the angles, how to eat well for your body type, how to choose the best ingredients, and how to make the change to healthy living in your life. One final subject we need to cover is this, eating out. These days we all do it a lot. I always try to find out how the restaurants are doing things and as a result, I have a lot of chef friends. I'll be chatting with some of the leading enlightened chefs in South Africa to find out how they're contributing to a healthy lifestyle. I'm going to show you how what you eat will change your life. Coming up, I get down and do some cooking. Stay with us for my first recipes of the series. part of the goodfood.com website is going to be the recipes. Recently I did some food demos. We filmed the practice runs to simulate the performance anxiety. 
But these recipes rock, so they'll also be the first recipes I'm going to put on the website. These demos were a great opportunity to show people that healthy food can be really tasty. All my recipes are quick, easy and healthy, geared for an urban lifestyle. Now, in order to make sure that I get the very best ingredients for all of my recipes, I have a simple checklist that I use. First, they've got to be fresh. Second, they've got to be as local as possible. Thirdly, I use seasonal ingredients. If it's seasonal, it's much more likely to be fresh and local. Finally, and in fact most importantly, I use organic produce wherever possible. As Crispin said, mass-produced food is grown for profit and not for flavor or nutritional value. So I use organic produce wherever possible. So when I buy my ingredients, they have to meet three out of four of these criteria. The first dish I'm making has an Indian flavor. I have to make paneer, a kind of homemade Indian cottage cheese. It's easy to do, but it takes some time to prepare. Okay, this is the thing that I'm crapping myself for the most. This is matar paneer that I'm cooking on the Eastern Mosaic stage. It has to be done within 30 minutes. Yeah, let's see how we go. <laughs> These demos are happening at a big local food and wine expo. They have chefs from all around the world this year that's from Britain, Australia, I think there's a guy from Norway, me. <laughs> to make the paneer, I gently heat two liters of organic full cream milk. This takes a while, so on the day, I got it prepared by one of my fabulous assistants. The other thing that I have to have is the milk heated up. And no problem. Put on a face. Juice and DC two organic lemons and add the juice to the milk. This is the curdling agent. It separates the milk into curds and whey. These curds form the basis of all cheeses. Sometimes animal rennet is used as a curdling agent in cheese making, which isn't good for vegetarians, so paneer is a good alternative. Strain the curds into a clean dishcloth and squeeze out the excess whey. But be careful, it's hot. Press the curds with a heavy weight for about 15 minutes and it's done. Now to make the matar. Heat two tablespoons of organic olive oil on medium heat. When it's hot, add one teaspoon of black mustard seeds. They crackle, kind of like popcorn. Then add one teaspoon of cumin seeds. Frying the spices releases their flavor. Then add about one teaspoon of grated ginger and saute for a few moments. Puree eight large organic tomatoes and add them to the pot with a teaspoon of turmeric. Oh, yeah. The color changes very nicely. Add a tablespoon of garam masala and a tablespoon of some spicy hot mother-in-law masala or hot chili powder. You guys are going, oh no, it's going to be hot. Add two tablespoons of organic tomato paste and two cups of fresh peas. Stir through, cover, and leave to cook for 15 minutes. Finely chop three tablespoons of fresh mint, add to the pot and stir through, infusing the wonderful aromatic herb. Now take the drained paneer from the cloth and cut it into cubes. Add a tablespoon of finely ground coriander seeds and two tablespoons of fennel seeds. Then, to take away any metallic taste from the tomatoes, add a tablespoon of jaggery or brown sugar. Serve onto a plate and top with the paneer. Mm. Woo, that's got a kick too. There we go. You went great. <laughs> I don't know if that was 30 minutes. <laughs>